know about you guys, but I don't really like watching long, drawn-out reviews, especially when they're on the internet, because a lot of times they're already biased, and can you really trust what the person's saying? So I'm going to keep this nice, short, and sweet, and obviously, I did not get any of this stuff for free. Actually, I did get one of these things for free, but not because the company gave it to me. But the first thing I'm going to try is this Oikos Greek Yogurt, and a lot of you have recommended this to me. This is the triple zero version, so apparently it's higher in protein. Pretty good macros from what I see, but you guys know how I feel about Greek yogurt. I think it tastes like poison, and already looking at this, I can't say I'm too excited to try it. It says right there on the label, it has no added sugar, no fat, no artificial sweeteners. The only thing that's giving me a little bit of hope is that it says it's not a low calorie food, so I guess that is gonna be a good thing here. So we are gonna give this a little try. It's okay, it doesn't have much flavor at all. This is coconut cream. It has a hint of coconut, that's for sure. But, I mean, it's definitely not the best tasting thing. It's better than a lot of Greek yogurts. It's definitely better than plain Greek yogurt. If you can eat plain Greek yogurt without adding anything to it, you are a sick individual. I'm thinking the next thing on the menu is going to be a lot better, and I did get this for free, but only because every Friday at Kroger, you can get one thing for free with the free Friday coupon. I've been telling you guys to buy it. So here's what I picked up a few weeks ago. Saw it in the cupboard, so I'm like, you might as well give it a try here. And this is chocolate chip cookie dough. And I mean, just by looking at the macros, they're pretty bad. So I assume that's gonna taste pretty good. Let me get a chance to say the things I never say. Cause where I'm from, we lose somebody every single day. And it's not as good as I thought it'd be. It tastes very, very artificial. I mean, it's edible, but man, I thought it was gonna be a lot better. Nowhere near as good as the Quest cookie dough bar. That is by far the best protein bar that I've ever had taste-wise. Plus, it has a lot better macros on it. Kind of disappointed with this, but all right, guys, that's all I wanted. You win somehow, so give up on the bottom, baby. It's hard. Someone left a comment a few weeks ago about making a Quest bagel, and it sounded pretty good, so I figured I'd try it out. The only problem is, I don't have bagels. You guys know I don't follow recipes that close, but I feel like that's kind of essential for that one. But what we're gonna do instead is make, I guess, a Quest hoagie. So all we're gonna do is take a hoagie roll, put some almond butter on there, and a Quest bar, throw it in the oven for about, I don't know, three or four minutes, see how it turns out. Sounds like it'll be pretty good. Just left it in long enough for everything to melt. Got the bread a little bit crispy. Let's try this guy out. Might be a little too much bread or maybe just not enough Quest Bar, but I think on the bagel will be a little bit better. Maybe I should just double stuff it next time. Either way, still really good. So one of the things that was brought to my attention in my mock me on that last squat attempt that I ended up failing was that I really rushed my setup. And what you're gonna see is that I never even get fully balanced before going into the first rep. I think one of the reasons for this was just nerves. I was trying to get it over with and I didn't take enough time to really brace myself and really get ready for the lift. So that's one thing I'm gonna be working on and I wanna work on it when the weight is a lot lighter. Obviously, I'm not getting psyched out when I'm only using about 80% of my one rep max. So what I'm doing is just taking a few extra seconds in my setup to make sure that I'm ready for the set. And some people will argue and say, well, you're wasting energy by slowing down your setup. And I don't necessarily agree with this. I think that it actually adds a lot of value. And with these big lifts, there's a lot of intricacies from the start to the finish of the lift. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm paying attention to every portion of it. So not just the actual squat movement and not just even the setup. I need to pay attention to the re-rack, everything involved with it. And that goes for all my main movements. So squats on this day felt pretty good. But like I said, I wasn't using that heavy of weight and then I moved into front squats. I actually ended up PRing with 195 pounds for sets of 10, which is pretty brutal. So that is going to wrap up the workout footage. I am gonna come back with some deadlifts at the end of the video. We're gonna go into some pretty good food, so hopefully you guys enjoy this and I'll talk to you all very soon. quality of the video. I am using a new lens and I have been using it the last few videos actually, but maybe you guys can't even tell a difference. I just don't know how I feel about it yet. It's so, uh, it's pretty zoomed in. It feels like it's sucking my face off, but I don't know. It's supposed to be a better lens, but that's probably just all marketing. Anyway, we're going to get some food here. And if you're going into the end of the day, and you don't know what you want to eat. 
the answer is always going to be breakfast, regardless of what time of the day it is. And if you don't know, if you want pancakes, waffles, or French toast, well, there's two answers to this actually. The first is going to be pancakes, if you can only choose one. But it's my world, and I can do what I want, so we're gonna have all three. I think I'm gonna go with some PB&J pancakes. I'm gonna try to make some like red velvet French toast sticks. I still have this leftover red velvet cupcake mix that I used when I made that video. What was it called? Getting 12 inches for a dollar or something like that, and I made those uh, ricotta subs, which were fantastic, by the way. But we're gonna try to get rid of this, and we got a lot of food to eat. New York taught me to be real. Out here, it's kill or get killed. So I gotta make that change and just, just tell them how I feel. And I'm feeling like I lived so many lifetimes already. And the funny part is, man, I just begun. So if I die. So we're finally finished here, quite the process, but definitely worth it. So those French toast sticks are actually pretty decent. I wasn't sure mixing that cupcake mix in with egg beaters and trying to make some French toast out of it, but it's pretty good. The pancakes, Hungry Jack pancake mix, of course you can never go wrong, just a plain old waffles. And then we got an omelet stuffed with, let's see, pepperoni, ham, onion, spinach, and then topped with some queso. Few grams of carbs in this meal. So no junk bowl tonight. We're gonna take it pretty easy. Just have a little sampler plate, you know, have a little bit of everything. So what we've got, some Chex Mix Muddy Buddies, some of these Quest cookies, which I put in the oven for about five or six minutes at 400. Pop-Tart, we got two of these cookies and cream Oreos, and I do not recommend these. A lot of you guys have asked for my feedback on that. The s'mores are a lot better, and really, I mean, they're good. All Oreos are good, but there's, a, there's much better Oreos out there. And then we have got these cookies, which the box is right here, because it is impossible to only eat three of these. So good, terrible macros, but that's all right. So this is how I'm gonna knock out the macros for the day, or maybe just go over them by a lot. I moved on to ballers. I'm a little bit behind trying to play catch up here enjoying every minute of it Man, I really do love cookies a lot more than I love deadlift rep days And I know to some of you six reps is not a lot but for me on a movement like the deadlift It is a good amount of volume. I'm using 375 pounds here and this is really the first deadlift workout that I've struggled with since the mock meet. So, you know, I did the meet and I traveled for that week. I came back and I did a deadlift speed day, which, you know, is never too difficult. But you can probably tell in my facial expressions and the little bit of form breakdown that this was not as easy as I would have hoped, but I was pretty pleased overall with the way that my main deadlift sets went. But when I move into the block poles, I find something that I'm a little bit displeased with so I'm going for sets of three and on this first set I only get two reps and you see I'll fail the third rep but again I didn't fail physically I failed mentally which is the biggest issue in my mind especially when I look back at my mock me and I say okay maybe this is one of the reasons that I'm not progressing the way I would like and if it was physical I wouldn't be able to come back for these next two sets and hit all three reps so it's something that I really need to get past I'm backing away from I don't know pain or backing away from I don't know if I'm scared to get hurt but whatever it is it's a mental barrier that I need to get over and that is gonna be my challenge to you guys if you get into a movement I'm not telling you to go all out and hurt yourself but I bet you that you can get one more rep just one more and I bet you if you don't think you can then it's just mental and you actually have the physical ability to do so so do that one rep one set in your workout Hopefully it works out for you guys. I think we all have it in us. That's going to be the end of the video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. I'd really appreciate that. I'll talk to you guys next time.